Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 149 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case in which a PCI of a native coronary CTO was attempted instead of attempting initially vein graft intervention. The patient had previous coronary bypass with lima to LAD and three saphenous vein grafts. He had already PCI in two of those three SVGs and presented with angina. Diagnostic angiography demonstrated CTO of the mid LAD as well as CTO of the obtuse marginal branch. There was a patent lima to LAD graft supplying the mid LAD. There was a CTO of the mid-right coronary artery with heavy calcification with the distal RCA filling through a saphenous vein graft that had an ostea lesion which was considered to be the culprit for the patient's presentation. He also had two other vein grafts. One was to an acute marginal branch that was patent and the other one was to the obtuse marginal branch that was also patent. Both of those grafts had been stented in the past. Therefore, the culprit was the proximal SVG to right coronary artery lesion. And a decision was made after discussing with the patient and the referring to actually attempt to recanalize the native right coronary artery, which would likely provide better long-term outcomes than PCI of the osteal SVG lesion. Having said that, this was a complex CTO. There is a well-defined proximal cap, however, there is heavy calcification and tortuosity. The occlusion length was about 40 millimeters. The distal vessel was of good quality, however, there was not good filling distal to the vein graft anastomosis, no good uh, retrograde stump. And uh, based on this, the plan was to first try with undergrade wire escalation, then try to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft and lastly do undergrade dissection reentry with the concern being that going undergrade dissection close to the vein graft anastomosis might compromise the flow through the SVG to the right coronary artery. Amplage 1 guide was used to engage the right coronary artery and the JR to engage the SVG to the right. A safety wire was placed in the SVG to the right coronary artery, both for safety but also for illustrating the location of the distal vessel. And then undergrade wire escalation was done using multiple microcatheters, turnpike spiral, caravel, multiple wires, Pilot 200, Sion Black, Filter XTA with a trap liner guide extension. Unfortunately, there was severe calcification and undergrade wire escalation failed. A retrograde attempt was subsequently done. However, due to the lack of a clear-cut distal stump, it was not possible to advance retrograde equipment into the native right coronary artery, despite using an angulated supercross 120 microcatheter. So we're back to undergrade crossing attempts. We realized that undergrade wiring would not work and we changed to undergrade dissection reentry using knuckled guide wires. And then after using a Sion Black polymer jacketed wire, the wire seemed to advance close to the distal cap. It actually was moving along the side of a branch of the distal right coronary artery. And after this, we decided to attempt reentry, delivering the Stingray balloon. The initial reentry was proximal to the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. We can see the two markers of the stingray balloon with the guide wire exiting proximal to the proximal marker. However, re-entry attempts there were not successful. We advanced a knuckle further down, literally at the touchdown of the SVG, and repeated the re-entry attempts using the double blind stick and swap technique and using the wire that was present into the vein graft as a marker of where the true lumen would be. However, unfortunately, despite those attempts, it was not possible to recanalize uh, or re-enter into the distal true lumen. But fortunately, there was no injury on the saphenous vein graft or the distal right coronary artery. After this, and given all the challenges, it was decided to stand the vein graft to the right coronary artery. Here's intravascular ultrasound. 
showing some calcification as well as um, uh, plaque in the proximal segment. So the proximal segment mainly has soft plaque. A filter wire was placed following by standing that provided a nice result with T3 flow into the right coronary artery. So this case provides interesting lesson. The first one is that although recanalizing the native right coronary artery in the long run has better outcomes compared to recanalizing the vein graft, at the same time recanalizing CTOs in previous bypass patients can be very complex and may fail as was the case in this patient. Retrospectively, what we have said that the better way would have been to just stand the SVG from the beginning and not even attempt PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. But this is something that should be decided individually for every case. Second, there is a difficulty when there is tortuosity and calcium, as was the case in this right coronary artery. And finally, re-entry can be challenging uh, around the touchdown of bypass grafts, likely because of significant uh, fibrous tissue and calcification. Potentially, one could have gone even further down in the native coronary, distal to the touchdown, and then re-enter there and then place stents and occlude the vein graft. However, in this case, we we're concerned about compromising flow to the right coronary, which was the only source of flow coming from the saphenous vein graft. Thank you.